Good morning. Good morning. And uh, welcome to Rincon uh, United Church of Christ uh, today on March 17th. My name is Don Cole. I need, use he, him program, uh, pronouns. Uh, but it's March 17th. Does anybody know what day it is today? <laughs> St. Patrick's Day. All right? St. Patrick's Day. So hold on. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. So welcome to everybody and welcome to all the people joining us online. We're happy to have you. And if you have online, if you can at home, you have uh, St. Patrick's Day gear, you can wear that too. Uh, so uh, first of all, let me, uh, let me say today, uh, we have on the outside rows here, we have safe seating. So if you do not want to appear on the online version of this, please sit in the outside rows. Uh, at the end of each row, you'll find a friendship register that helps you connect, uh, helps us connect to you. So please sign it and pass it down the row so we can keep track of who's here. And if you want, if uh, you want to get us to get in touch with you, please make a note. Um, is there, and I'd like to welcome any first time visitors to the church. Uh, if anybody's here and would like to introduce themselves, this is the time for us to pass around the mic and you can say hello. Is there anybody here for the first time? Hey. Got one. Hi, my name's Jeannie Gunther. I go to the UCC Church in Naperville, Illinois, and I just volunteered to chair their stewardship campaign. <laughs> so any ideas you have, let me know. Hey. Thank <laughs> you. I'm thrilled welcome. to be here. You're very welcome. <laughs> anybody else want to say hello? All right. Welcome. Uh, so the other thing we'd like to, we always do every Sunday is a land acknowledgement. So we need, we're acknowledging that the land of this church was originally a, a, a sacred land of the Tohono O'odham people here in Tucson. And we acknowledge that. And I encourage you to think about that and uh, recognize that the colonialism of which we're a part of and a party of left some things and, in, and uh, injured people as we uh, took land in this country. And I encourage you to come once a month, we meet and talk about that. Uh, and you'll see it in the bulletin when it comes up. So it's an important thing and uh, the church is really trying to make a difference when it comes to land acknowledgement. Uh, so from an announcement perspective, I have a bunch here. Uh, so first of all, all the, and Ginger, invite, uh, the, invite you to all are welcome to uh, a play day today. Uh, this is uh, to prepare for Palm Sunday and there's gonna be mask making, there's gonna be improv and skits, there's gonna be costumes, uh, prop design, there's gonna be choreography, and this is geared around uh, middle school or high school age children and of course adults of all ages. Uh, so today, uh, they'll meet in the prayer garden after worship and choir practice and lunch will be served and the conclusion will be before three o'clock. Uh, but Ginger asked me to see if there's a show of hands so we could get an idea of how much pizza to order for this lunch. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, from, uh, from Matt, uh, the choir, there's a rehearsal today after service. Uh, it will be very short and there will be passing out music. Uh, I'm not sure if that's related to St. Patrick's Day. No, okay, I'm just kidding. Okay, no, yeah, I know. Yeah, Matt will be passing out music uh, in prepping for Easter. Okay, uh, the Rincon Community Exchange, was, which is a closed closet we have here. On Saturday, March 23rd from 11 to two, uh, they'll be cleaning and painting the Community Exchange. And anybody, uh, any help is, is welcome. Uh, we ask you, if you could, bring some cleaning supplies. And also, it's gonna be a mask a mandatory event. So uh, if you don't have a mask, there will be one for you, but we ask you to bring masks. Uh, there will also be, uh, on Maundy Thursday before Easter, uh, there will be a service where we'll pray and sing and take communion. Uh, 
and at 5.30 uh, that day, soup and bread will be handed out for anybody that attends. And there are seven jars left, uh, mason jars, that need to be filled with soup. So anybody that would like to make some soup would be happy to have it. Uh, finally, there, uh, coming up on March 20th, uh, there will be a meeting of prayer for Oak Flats, which is coming up. Uh, uh, it's going to the Supreme Court, uh, a judgment going to the Supreme Court for Oak Flats, Oak Flats development. This uh, prayer will be at Southside Presbyterian, and if, if you're interested, please contact Karen McDonald. And uh, if you are interested, uh, I was passed this book today uh, on Oak Flats, and if you want to read a little bit more about that sacred land, this is your opportunity. It will be part of our library. Uh, and I think that's all I have. So as they say in Ireland, Aaron Gabra. Thank you. It's that time for kids and uh, people with a childlike innocence that want to uh, join us to come on up. I'll tell you, I had to do my homework this morning before I came in. Unlike the rest of you, I did not do well in geography, so I had to do a little time with uh, this thing here. Yep, you can sit or stand, whatever you want to do. Well, we will give you assistance. Anybody else want to join us? Awesome. So, do you know what this is called? It's called a globe. You had your hand up. That was so good. I'm sorry. I didn't see your hand in time. So, do you think you can find Tucson on there? You guys can work together, too. It took me longer to find Tucson than it's going to take them. You find it? It took me much longer to find Tucson than it took them. Wow, you're good. You've, you've done this before, haven't you? Yeah, that explains it. I did it before, too. You want to help? You have a globe. Of course it is, yeah. I looked at a globe um, a long time ago. I'm going to say, let's see. I have to do math. Hold on. Probably about 57 years ago was the last time I looked at a globe before this morning. So, on this globe, I'm also going to find Jerusalem, which I did this morning. There it is. So, Jerusalem is, I'm going to show you, it's like right here. Everybody see that? Yeah, the print is really tiny. I had to take my glasses off and then hold it and do, you know, the thing that people with older vision have to do sometimes. So Jerusalem, can you say Jerusalem? Wait, one more time. Jerusalem. You got it. The end of the name of the city is Salem, and that means peace and harmony. In Hebrew, the language of the Jews they say shalom, which sounds a lot like Salem, right? Shalom. No, you've got your mouth full. Okay. Muslim people have a similar word. Does anybody know what that is? Salam. Good job, audience. You're doing a good job. Can you say salam? Very good. Jesus, who taught us about God and the peace of God, was a Jewish man who lived in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is called the holy city by Jewish people, Christian people, and Muslim people. It is a holy city, but it is not a peaceful city. People all over the world, Christian people, Jewish people, Muslim people, and others are praying and hoping right now that God's peace will come to Jerusalem and to all places where there is war. So today, we get to pray together for peace. Remember how we did it last week? Well, what's going to happen is I'm going to say a line, and then you're going to repeat it. Okay? Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Let peace and justice 
be with all the children of the world. Help us be agents of love, peace and justice. We pray. I love you and God loves you. We love you. Thank you so much. Oh, wait, I forgot something. I need a volunteer. I have two volunteers. You want to both volunteer? Okay, you're not gonna, you did last week. Here, you take one, and you take one. And if you would put those up on the altar table for me, I would appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you to the team. And again, since she wasn't here last week to hear this, I really want to thank Ginger for giving me this script for all these weeks on how to do this. It couldn't have been done without her. Can we please give her and Ollie a round of applause? Thank you so much. Please stand in body or spirit and join in our call to worship and our song response. Our spirits are one with you, great spirit. You strengthen us day and night. Share our barriers with our siblings and kindred. You, whom we see in all of creation and in all people, show your love for us. Help us to know, like the soaring eagle, the heights of knowledge. From the four directions, fill us with the four virtues. Fill us with the generosity, respect, and wisdom, so that we will help other people walk in the path of understanding and peace. Amen. To plant a seed is to believe in tomorrow. We'll sing our hymn now.
Good morning, everybody. My name is Beth Shelby, and I am chair of Spiritual Life and Worship Ministry Team. And I'm going to read you uh, the description of the ministry team. Um, in conjunction with the pastor, we are responsible for the formal expression of worship, that means worship service, and introduction, education, and evolution of faith through the Rincon community. The team shall also foster a spiritual enrichment through the arts, both within the congregation and the wider community. Through inclusive programs for all age groups, including children, youth, and adult forums, and sponsorship of intergenerational activities, the Spiritual Life and Worship team strives to build a firm foundation to enable a lifetime of growth in the progressive Christian faith to support the mission of Rincon. Now, specifically, just to name a few of the things that we do, um, let's see, wow, I'm looking at our minutes from the meeting. Um, we have been responsible for the band book card and continue to add to it and hope to see that grow even more. And uh, we have over 100 titles now. Um, we are responsible for the children's programming, the children's table, as well as uh, other activities as they arise, including the Easter egg hunt on Easter. Uh, chancel players. The, we also, an important part of, of our work is uh, decentering whiteness and the monthly meetings that we have. Uh, let's see, we schedule ushers and people who read the announcements and the coffee cart uh, and fellow, for fellowship time. And Bible study. And Bible study, you're right, thank you, Pastor. And uh, let's see, uh, I think I said liturgists. And then in addition to that, we also help out with um, special services such as the Good Friday service, Maundy Thursday, we set up for communion. Um, there are many, many aspects that involve artistic minds and hands and intellectual uh, growth and spiritual growth. If this is something you're interested in at all, uh, please let me know after the service and keep your eyes open for announcements. Very, very quickly, these are the members, the current members of the team. Uh, Davin Franklin Hicks, Margaret Douglas, both of whom are not here today, Ginger Taylor, Julie Cahoon, Ann Geiger, Shirley Schoenberger, and Sean Riley. So if you'd like to join this group, we'd love to have you. Thank you. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of John, uh, chapter 12, verses 20 through 32. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethesda in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep Keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will be my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come. And I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, 
and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. This ends the reading. Before we begin today, uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right, before we begin today, I just want to let everybody know that uh, all the music that we're doing today is, is uh, the tunes are Irish, the melodies are Irish. We even have uh, uh, Irish composers um, for a lot of our music today. And um, when I walked in today, um, uh, Rich, Ned, and Dave uh, asked me to play, if I would play a little bit of drum. Little did they know I minored in Irish drumming. Okay, well, there you go. So it's the perfect fit today. So professionalism, just let. <laughs> Sing on the day. 
you're so blessed with so many talented and giving people. Greetings, beloved of God. Greetings. May the peace of Christ be with you. My name is Reverend Lewis J. Mitchell. I use he, him pronouns, and I am honored to serve as the pastor here at Rencon Congregational United Church of Christ. I used to say that when I was doing the welcome, but I don't do the welcome anymore, so I thought I'd squeeze it in here, just in case you may not know who I am. Um, this, week, uh, this week's scripture took a little wrestling for me. Um, as often happens, I will have a scripture, a scripture in the lectionary, and I'll be like, yeah, I don't want to. But uh, sometimes I make myself do it, and other times I'm like, nope, not gonna. This time I made myself do it. So it is what it is. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we thank you for this breath and this day. We join with our children in praying for peace. Thank you for every child, every person who is right now in the midst of violence. Breathe a new vision into us, God, a vision of a just world. Help us to be agents of that change in our own ways, we pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, God. You are still our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So for those of you keeping track, last week's sermon title was Whitney Houston. This week's sermon title is Blue Oyster Cult. I've got a little bit of range in my playlist. <laughs> so, you know, often when I'm preparing uh, and reading and writing sermons, I have a playlist playing in the background because somehow I don't work as well in silence as I do without some other kind of energetic thing happening. This week's playlist was my old school suburban rock playlist. So a little Blue Oyster Cult came up. How many of you are familiar with the song, Don't Fear the Reaper? OK, a few of you. Others of you may decide to Google it later or not, as you see fit. But I want to talk today about end of life things. The scripture that we read today talks about the end of the life of Jesus. But in that way that seems to happen a lot in the text, it doesn't speak to it directly. It speaks to it kind of in a roundabout kind of way. Jesus doesn't say, it's time for me to die. What Jesus is reported to have said is that it is time for me to be glorified. I don't know about you, but often when I am engaging with death and dying, it doesn't occur to me that on the other side of death is glory. I, this caused me to remember that. There comes a time in all of our lives, we prayerfully, after a great many years, that we look around us and we wonder about the seeds that we'll leave behind. Not because we fear what comes next in this journey after mortal life, but because we hope that somehow as we move through the world that we've enabled someone, we've enabled something to grow from the examples in our lives. As we move closer in this month to crucifixion, we fight the urge to just jump right ahead to the resurrection. We move tenderly and tentatively and sometimes reluctantly to that place of death. Not just any death, but a particularly gruesome execution of Jesus. Legal within the rights of the state, but that didn't make it just. Painful, but necessary. His was a life taken as much as it was a life given. The point here, though, isn't the death. The point is the glorification, or legacy, 
in our case, what will people remember you for? Think about it for a minute. What will your life say about you? When people look back on the ways you've impacted them, what are the things that will come to mind? Will people remember you as they practice some attribute that they learned by your side? It might have been that time that you were making sandwiches together in the fellowship hall, and they remember the joy of community and your commitment to serve. When they think about you, will their eyes light up with love and joy? Will you be remembered more for those who drew closer to be close to your light or by those who are repelled by your judgment? These are heavy questions, but those of us that are still on this side of the grave should spend some time considering them. Who are we really? In spite of all the things, all the titles we have and the crosses and the big Bibles and all the religious trappings of who we are, what is the seed that we are planting today that will grow on? We will never see the bloom. We will not, but it will show up down the road. Blue Oyster Cult in this song, which I had to play several times and then look up the lyrics, they said something very profound that I'm gonna share with you. All our times have come. Here but now they're gone. Seasons don't fear the reaper, nor do the wind the sun or the rain. How did we come to be able, how did we come to fear death? The most natural of things. But many of us have an odd relationship with death. We have um, sought to sanitize it to the point that it doesn't really speak to the feelings that we have. Most of us of a certain age have lost someone we love. Many of us, several someones that we love. Walking with someone to the end of their life is a very tender time. Walking with someone who is suffering towards the end of their life is a tender time because we want them free from pain and grief and we also don't want to lose them in the flesh. But what we do get to do in every instance is hold close to the memories and the ways that their lives have blessed us. I know this is kind of a heavy sermon, but y'all be all right, you, it's, we can get through it. I've had the experience, I was gonna say good fortune, but not always. I've had the experience of sitting with people both in peaceful deaths and in deaths that were less peaceful. Those times are sacred, whether they're easy or not. And when people have had a long and full life, often at the end of their time, they're eager, if not grateful, to go. They've done their time. They've lost many of their loved ones already. And they're like, why am I still here? Can I go now, please? When people are younger, or they die in violent situations, it's a different kind of grief. Because we're not only grieving the loss of them, but we're grieving the loss of the possibilities that died with them. And yet, we don't need to fear death. For us, death is not the end. It is the next transition, but it is not the end. How many of you here know what comes after death? For sure. Okay, got a couple people. I cannot raise my hand. I have no idea what comes after death for sure. I know what I hope and what I believe, but no one has come back to tell me that my beliefs are accurate. So I'm gonna leave that a mystery for now. Um, as much as I desire to have mastery over it, I need to put that in the mystery category. I don't know what happens after death, but what I believe with my whole heart and what I've experienced in my own life is that something happens after death. That whatever we have inside this shell, the spirit of us is not contained 
in the shell that we currently occupy. That gives me great joy and great peace. My hope and my faith tell me that when I am gone from here, I will no longer be trapped by this body. I'll be free to move, to speak, to touch, to love those that survive me. And what I hope and pray for is to be connected with those that have preceded me. That's my hope. That's what my faith tells me to believe. And I hope that I'm right. I pray that I'm right. But with all the humility in me, I have to say, I can't guarantee that I am. But what I can guarantee is that while I am here, I have time to plant seeds. That I know for sure. So here we go. Homework time. I haven't signed you homework in a number of weeks, so no grumbling. And if those of you that know, know I will not be checking to see if you completed the homework, so I'm going to trust you on your honor to do the homework or not. Take some time this week to plant some seeds of the world. Reach out with tenderness, thoughtfulness, and care. Be an example of that thing that it says in the Bible, they will know us by our love. Be an example of that. You might do something small. Like this morning, we had a gentleman come to the office who was trying to get to another church down the road. He, uh, didn't, he couldn't hear, so he spent a lot of time making notes. And he asked if I could drive him uh, down to the other church, and I said, I can't, I gotta do a thing here in a few minutes. But we got together and we got him Ubered to where he wanted to go. Now that, that was a small thing for us, but it was a big thing for him. How wonderful to be a church where someone can just pop up and ask for some help and help is provided without judgment, without stipulations, without a cost. That seed was planted. He may never leave the Baptist church and come to the UCC church. We don't have a signer for him, so that put a little bug in my ear about something down the road that I would love to see happen, but we all have chances to plant seeds. So I'm going to ask you some questions real quick. We're wrapping up. How many of you have an idea of what seeds you're going to plant this week? I've got a couple ideas, okay. Those of you that are not yet raising your hands, think about the seeds you're going to plant. And again, it doesn't have to be some big thing that's on a billboard. It could be as simple as seeing someone who is houseless and saying, hello, my name is Lewis. What's your name? Do you need anything today? I don't have a lot, but maybe I can buy you a meal. That's it. For someone who walks around the world just being a thing, which most houseless people are seen as a thing and not a person, having someone acknowledge them is life-changing. It reminds them that they too are human. How do I know that? Because I've been homeless. I've watched people look at me as though I was a, a piece of garbage on the side of the road. And when someone dared to look me in the eye and just say hello, it reminded me that in spite of my circumstances, I still had humanity. And that was life changing for me. It may not be easy for you. You may be going through your own things, but plant some seeds this week. And this is my prayer for you, that the grace of God, my prayer for us, that the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit and the teachings of Jesus inform, reform, and make us fruitful, not for our own sake, but for the sake of the kingdom of God. Amen. I believe it's time to sing again, right? Yeah. Please stand in body and spirit. I'll say it again as the mic warms up. Please stand in body and spirit.
time that we set aside for you, uh, to set aside to invite you to be a part of our faith community, if you feel so led. This is also an opportunity to declare or renew your commitment to be a follower of Christ, whatever that looks like for you. If you would like to join our church, I invite you to raise a hand, and when the mic comes to you, just let us know who you are. If you're online and worshiping with us and you feel inclined to, if you feel like your shopping is done and Rencon is the place that your heart calls home, let us know in the chat and we will respond accordingly. Additionally, if you feel led to affirm or reaffirm your covenant with Christ, I invite you as you are able to come to the altar or extend your heart or your hand and let's pray together. You are invited as you feel led to come and pray with us here at the altar. If you are not able to do so, extend your hands or your heart. Those of you worshiping with us online, extend your hearts to us and we will pray together. Please pray with me. God of all time and of many journeys, we come to you with gratitude and we come with yearning. Again, with our hearts, we say yes to you. Fill us with you, God, your mercy, your love, your wisdom, your discernment, your capacity for deep diversity and amazing grace. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Bless our yeses and send us from this place renewed, we pray. We offer our whole selves to you, hiding nothing as if we could, believing that you've created us for and with purpose. Equip us to do what you've sent us to this time and place to do. Help us to plant the seeds that you've put in our hands. Minimize our impatience with others and with ourselves. Maximize our ability to see you in every living thing that you've created, especially when it's hard. We need you every hour we need you. Bless us now, our Savior. We come to you. I invite you now to join me in praying this version of the Lord's Prayer. Our Creator, who is in all things, above us, below us, within us, all around us, we lift up your many names with praise and reverence. May we bring the kingdom of love and service to this place as we imagine it to be in heaven. Give us gratitude for this breath, this day. We thank you for your daily provision. Forgive us for those we've harmed, intentionally or not. Give us a heart of forgiveness for those who have harmed us, intentionally or not. Give us sight to see temptation and discernment to turn away. Direct us away from the evil in our midst and in our hearts. This kingdom is yours, and tending it is our responsibility. All power is yours, and any that we hold comes from you. Glory is yours, and any that we claim is residual to our relationship with you. Your eternal spirit lives on forever in us and beyond us, for which we are thankful. Amen. Now let us gather together our gifts and bring them to God as our offering and our in our gratitude and praise.
Gracious God, accept these gifts we place before you now. May your peace be in our hearts, your grace be in our words, your love be in our hands, and your joy be in our souls. Amen. Amen. Please stand in body your spirit and join for a final hymn. <laughs>
bless you real good and cause your cup of grace to overflow so much that it waters the seeds that you plant and the seeds of others who are in a time of dryness. We hope and pray that all of our seeds come to fruition and change the world. Amen.